Hello everybody, welcome to the Comet Cave Podcast, where we'll talk everything ranging from comet books to comet books. So this is actually a revival of an old podcast that was abandoned after seven episodes. It was me and my friend just talking about comet books. And so kind of just ended and I'm bringing it back with just me. So welcome. I'd also like to mention that our YouTube channel is back with new episodes uploading almost daily. But yeah. So today, since it's just the first episode, I'm just going to do like an introduction. Um, I love comic books. Uh, my favorites are like Spider-Man, of course, but I also like Teen Titans, like Beast Boy, I like Flash, X-Men, Batman, kind of like everything, really. So, I'll also talk about the history of comic books today, just a quick overview, I'm kind of doing this from memory, almost. So, I'll jump right in. So, a comic, that's not the comedian, a comic is a sequential panel that basically tells a story and very simple to understand so comments just formed i mean you could trace it back to like egyptian hieroglyphics so let's skip to the 1930s where comic books which actually originate from newspaper comments like uh, peanuts or whatever i mean it wasn't peanuts then but that's just an example but they the newspaper publishers wanted to publish their comments because they just had the old ones they wanted to pre-publish. So they had comic books, which are collections of them, and eventually it grew into where a comic book could be its own story. And so, sorry, being new companies such as National Comics or Timely Comics, which if you didn't know is DC and Marvel. So. Two teenage boys, uh, well, teenage-ish, but Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster were Jewish boys who created a character called Superman. Also, quick fact, Jewish people were in the comfort entry because comfort entry was kind of a, uh, not that much good industry to work in, and it was very anti-Semitic views back then. So they created a character called Superman and since they were Jewish they got rejected many times. So Superman just went unwritten or unpublished. So eventually a company called National Periodical Publications DC uh we get when they call themselves DC in a little while and they have Action Comics Issue 1, which starts off the Golden Age of Comet Books, which lasted from 1938, which is when Action Comics Issue 1 started to around 1954-55. So, Action Comics Issue 1 with Superman was a hit, of course, and it started a new boom of superheroes. And especially since, if you know your history, 1939, September 1st, was the invasion of Poland, which is the start of World War II. So having superheroes and war match because good versus evil. You could have characters punching evil, nasty Nazis, such as Captain America. So... Nets' best character to rise to popularity was a year later with Batman in Detective Comics issue 27. The original idea was made by Bob Kane. If I remember my history correct, he made a kind of proto Batman, which wasn't that good. And Bill Finger basically put his finger on it <laughs> and made the Batman we know today. And Bill Finger's credit 
did not go seen for many years. It was only about 2008, 2009, somewhere around then, that Bill Finger finally got his credit for the creation of Batman. And so let's jump in. Who, who else came up from this boom? 1939, a small comic book company also located in New York City. DC, I mean, National was also located in New York. Was Timely Comets, made by Martin Goodman. And so, as you can tell, I know a little bit more about Timely, but Timely created a comic book called Marvel Comets Issue 1 which had the first appearance of the Human Torch, which is not the Fantastic Four Human Torch. It's actually Jim Hammond, a pre-version of it, of Johnny. Not it. <laughs> so, other heroes rose to prominence, such as Wonder Woman in 1941, The Flash in 1940. Naturally, it was Jay Garrick, not Barry Allen or Wally West. Uh, Green Lantern in 1940, I believe. The Alan Scott version where he had an actual lantern. Uh, there's other heroes such as Dr. Fate, Adam, Hawkman, Green Arrow, Aquaman. Timely also invented Namor the Submariner, which you might remember from Black Panther Wakanda Forever. And. Here's a little fun fact. The Human Torch and the Submariner had the first superhero versus superhero fight. Uh, I forgot what issue it was exactly. I'll probably post it in the description of this. But that was a pretty big moment. And it was timely being Marvel before Marvel was a thing. Because Marvel is usually more radical in their new ideas. Also, we get this famous one, which was traded in 1940, here's first in 1941, so, but it's Captain America Comics issue one, which, front cover, is Captain America punching Adolf Hitler, and if you know your history, it was a year before America even joined the war, so it was very controversial. Hmm. Another character who was prominence was the was the what I mean, Captain Marvel, and I don't mean Carol Danvers Captain Marvel. I mean Billy Batson Shazam. He was basically a copy of Superman. Well, not really. I mean, he had the Shazam thing. It's just the word Shazam originates from Captain Marvel comics. Well, Wiz comics. He first appeared in Wiz Comics issue 2, Bentley. And here's a little also fun fact. Elvis Presley loved Captain Marvel. So, yeah. So, during the war, they started fighting in the war. So, you had, like, Superman, Batman, and Robin. Also, yeah, Robin appeared in 1940. I forgot to mention that. They had them fighting in the war. They had them fighting Nazis, Japanese so yeah, um, they also had their first ever superhero team, the Justice Society of America, or the JSA for short. So after the war, superhero comics started to die down, and when I'm talking about comic books, I'm mostly mean superhero comic books, so that's the only thing I really know. Superhero comic books started to die down without the war leading their meaning it kind of fell out and another thing that awfully happened was a book by Frederick Wortham called Seduction of the Innocent talked about how comic books were a negative impact on youth and those juvenile delinquency. And so, that marked the end of the Golden Age comic books. But, that's not the end of comic books. I forgot to completely mention the Comics Code Authority. 
<laughs> so Comet's show authority was the uh, author code that basically issued rules on comic books which banned like a lot of stuff such as like gore, sex, whatever, murder, and you really had to make it positive and upright and you had to make it like appropriate and nothing like too romantic or too horror. You couldn't even have horror comic books. And so the Silver Age of Comic Books starts with Showcase Issue 4. And that is the first appearance of Barry Allen, The Flash. So basically, DC wanted to redo The Flash in a new modern style. You see, Jake Garrett's origin was actually that he inhaled fumes of hard water, which made him super fast. Hard water is ice. And at this time, you know, kids were loving science stuff. It was the space race. So they, they knew hard water wasn't real. So you had to give it a more scientific approach. This forensic scientist, Barry Allen, was in his lab with chemicals, lightning truck, and he went into the chemicals, giving him super speed. And so this started the new Silver Age of comic books. And DC continued with their making of old characters into new characters with Green Lantern making the Hal Jordan version and all this space stuff. It really... I can't think of words anymore. But... It has all that space element in it for the space race, of course. And so, I mean, you get the Green Lantern core, or just the start of it, really. But, if we'll skip to a few years later, early 60s, the Justice League of America was made, which is the Justice League. And it was a little bit of a hit. And the two publishers of National and now, well, actually not now, of Timely, or actually Atlas, yeah, Atlas, in 1954, Timely changed to Atlas, and that lasted till 1961, which is around this time, so Atlas or Marvel comic books. And so he gets the idea to do a team comic book from National. And so he goes to Stan Lee, uh, one of his relatives who had been working with him since the 40s, who was a little bit of the uh, bullpen bully, is what most workers such as Jack Kirby would have called him. But they come up, him... And Kirby come up with the Fantastic Four, which you should know. If you don't, uh, please stop listening to James' podcast. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But, Fantastic Four is, of course, Reed Richards, Sue Storm, Johnny Storm, and Ben Grimm. Four people who went up into space and into a field of radioactivity and got superpowers. Come back down and change. Reed gets stretchy arms and stuff like that. Elasticity. And he calls himself Mr. Fantastic. Sue Storm gets invisibility and force fields. And she's an invisible woman. Johnny Storm can go flame on and turn into fire. And he's called the Human Torch. Which, if you remember from earlier, so they also saw another idea from DC, using old characters' names into new characters. And then you also have Ben Graham, which turns into the orange rock monster that he is known for. And Reed Richards actually comes up with the name The Thing. So, 
now we have Marvel Comics entering the era. And what Marvel does is make a lot of comic books. So, or new characters, I should say. They do make a lot of comic books. They actually don't have that much comic book series because they only can publish around 12-ish. So, because National owned Marvel's publishing thing, so they limited the number of series, and since they saw them as rivals, they didn't think they would, they basically laughed in their faces. Uh, it wasn't until years later they finally got their own, it was 1968, they got their own publishing rights back. Which is why some series started in 1968, such as Invincible Iron Man or Namor the Submariner. So, yeah. Back to 1961, of course. Later, we get characters such as Ant Man, Spider Man, and since Spider Man's my favorite, I'm gonna go into a little bit about Spider Man. So. As the story goes, Stanley wanted to make a new character, right? So he was just in his office, uh, looking on the wall, and he saw a fly on the wall. So he started thinking of like insect or arthropods names, so like Fly Man, Mosquito Man. He probably got Ant Man from that, who knows? But he got Spider Man, and he thought, that sounds cool. So he starts coming up with the idea, and he says, why not make him a teenager? So he runs, and he also figures other stuff, of course. So he runs to your office with one good man, and he absolutely rejects it. And so, later they have this series called Amazing Adult Fantasy, and it's like, really not selling well, so on the 15th issue, they're you want to end it. And so, Goodman finally lets Lee put his character Spider-Man in it. And before this, Stan had went to Jack Kirby to ask him to make the uh, art for it. Because Stanley was not an artist at all. And Jack Kirby gave him something that Stan hated. And Stan ran to Steve Ditko, another right, artist of the time, and he created the lovable suit we know today. And so Amazing Fantasy 15 is the first appearance of Spider-Man. It covers the origin that we all know and love, and I've seen a million times. So, we also get characters like the Hulk, which or like split personalities and also exemplify there's the word I was looking for earlier the time period so you'll see all these some books kind of exemplify their time periods such as the Torn Age with World War II and Silver Age with this space race and this nuclear bomb war scare so because this was around the time of the Cuban Missile Crisis so nuclear arms were kind of in the news a lot with the also with the arms space there we go and we also get characters like Dole and Iron Man and Iron Man is also a little bit of time because he's at instead of being in the Middle East he was actually in Vietnam so yeah then we get the most <laughs> political whatever team there probably is the X-Men, which are just a huge allegory for racism and stuff like that. Because at the time, it was, you know, the civil rights movement, and the X-Men were hated on. They were mutants. They were different. And this wasn't originally, but it was later made so that Professor X would be written more like Martin Luther King Jr. and Magneto would be written more like Malcolm X. Which, if you know history, Martin Luther King Jr. was a little bit more peaceful and nonviolent about his 
ways of going to the civil rights movement, while Malcolm X represented the more violent, militaristic way into it, which you also see with the Black Panthers. Um, speaking of Black Panther, later in the decade, you also get the first appearance of Black Panther, which was one of the first Black superheroes in comic books. So, where do we go next? Oh yeah, the Batman television show in 1966, you know, the na 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 yeah, that one. So, it was a satirical show um, about Batman, and it rose Batman comic books up. Now, when we wrote that, it always come and puts it up for Batman and stuff. So, yeah. And I also forgot to mention a few other stuff, because I'm very forgetful. We also have the Avengers. And the Avengers consisted of, originally, the Hulk, Ant-Man, the Wasp, Iron Man, and Thor. So, they come together to actually stop the Hulk, because, you know, the Hulk was hated on. But then they figure out the Hulk was being good, and it was just a master trick by Loki. In issue four of the Avengers, we have Steve Rogers, Captain America, come back. And we figure out that he's been in ice for around 20 years, and his psychic, Bucky Bonds, had died. Which actually was a retcon. We also get characters like uh, Daredevil. And also Batgirl, which was originally at first in the Batman 66 show. So, let me get back to yeah, it's a show, as I just remember a lot more about Switch, but talk about it later in future episodes. So, Batman 66 show, of course, those Batman comics. So, what happens when we enter a new decade, the 1970s? Now, I want you to remember around this time also. There was counterculture with hippies and stuff like that. And that was prominent in the 60s. But now all that generation, the boomers, are joining in the comic book industry. While all the silent or greatest generation are leaving. So... We have the Bronze Age comic books, which the first Bronze Age comic books is when Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams join up to do a issue of the Green Lantern series. It had kind of fallen out, and they have issue 75, I believe, or 76. But that issue was very, very influential. It had racism. One of the best scenes in it is near the very end where a black man asks how Jordan, if he had done anything for the black skinned people. Because during the 60s, how Jordan was off in space saving the pink or purple, whatever, skinned people. So it was kind of a meaning moment, and it was very, very political. Because Green Arrow was supposed to be the liberal side, which side they were on at the time. And how Jordan was representing the uh, conservative. So left versus right. And they became a duo, Green Lantern and Green Arrow. And also in issue 85, we have Roy Harper on drugs, which was very huge and very groundbreaking because around that time also, we have the Amazing Spider-Man issue, I'm going to say 96, I'm going to say 96, uh, which did a similar thing, but it was a boy uh, intoxicated on drugs, and by the way, this was not allowed to go at all, but the U.S. Department of Health and Safety asked Stanley to write a comic book about this because, you know, that was the youth reading it. And so they wanted the youth to stop doing drugs, as you know, counterculture and hippies. So Stanley does it, and 
the comic code gets mad at him and they don't put the stamp on it of approval. And eventually, the comics code authority comics code changes to where you can get stuff like that. And it also adds where you can have like light or you can't have full really with stuff like werewolves or vampires or stuff like that which i'll talk about in a minute so hmm speaking of batman comic books after the show ended in 68 i believe batman comic books started to fall and so denny o'neill neil adams came back and started to look into Batman's roots with the Bill Finger, the dark noir mystery type Batman. And so you get the creation of the modern Batman with the Bulusu, of course, and the K Crusader, or the Dark Knight. And also around this time, Kirby, Jack Kirby that is, left DC where he would create the fourth world which was about the new gods very famous comic book series which started dark side as you know but yeah so the bronze age comic books was more with changes in comics code and stuff and then you also have this very influential story called The Night Gwen Stacy Died. If you've ever seen The Amazing Spider-Man, it was kind of adapted into this, into that movie. So, Spider-Man's girlfriend at the time, Gwen Stacy, got captured by the Green Goblin, who Peter thought was regular. He thought Norman was just being Norman. Like, he was not evil anymore. And the issues are Amazing Spider-Man 121 and 122, by the way. And so he kidnaps Gwen Stacy and made Spider-Man come to a bridge. By the way, Peter has the flu, or flu at this time, so he's kind of sick, so he's not full sensed. And so, what Green Goblin does is he fights Gwen Stacy, I mean, not Gwen Stacy, what am I talking about? He fights Spider-Man and he drops Gwen Stacy off the bridge. And so, Spider-Man shoots his web and as you know, it Hits her neck and crack. Gwen Stacy dies, sadly. And that was kind of a sad moment. And it was also kind of sad because earlier in issue 90, her father died, George Stacy, her captain, George Stacy. So, yeah. But back with the horror stuff. We have things like Swamp Thing or Ghost Rider. I really love Ghost Rider, by the way. Or like Dracula, like I'm into comic books. We also get stuff like Moon Knight. So, another thing, because, you know, I said I like the X Men. We have. The X Men were kind of falling off, they were not that much of a popular series in the 60s and by the 70s they were just kind of reprinted stories and that all changed in 1975 when they released giant size ish x-men issue one and this started probably the most famous x-men stories ever like you have wolverine join the team also wolverine had appeared the first few years earlier you have nightcrawler storm colossus uh who else joined the team uh, i think sunbird and sunfire and thunderbird joined but they aren't as prominent as today but you still have some of the original members you don't have angel or iceman but you do have cyclops and gene gray uh beast is working with the avengers at the time by the way and so, basically, Professor X gets more recruits, and they go.
go off and new adventures. And the reason why they do this is because they also want more cultures in their comic books like Adsmen because you know Adsmen's are an allegory for racism. So you have Storm which is a princess in Africa, I think it's in Kenya, I believe. And then you also have Nightcrawler, which of course is from Germany, Munich, Colossus from Soviet Russia, then Sunfire is from Japan, and Thunderbirds are Native American. So this also kind of starts the Chris Claremont era, which is the most famous era of X-Men you can really think of, other than 90s. And later on, he would going to have the Dark Phoenix Saga, Days of Future Past, which is also in Bronze Age, because that was 80 and 81, might be even 79 a little bit, but, yeah. So, around that time also, we have, this, this is my favorite, so, kind of got to include this. The New Teen Times by Marv Wolfman and George Perez. So this was in 1980 where they had some of the original members of Teen Titans, or actually one member of Titans West, Beast Boy, and some new characters such as Cyborg, Raven, Starfire, and the team. So, yeah, those characters are really popular today, and their origins are in New Teen Titans. So, yeah, that was real popular, so like, X-Men, New Teen Titans, and teen characters in general just became more popular. So, then, the mid-80s, we have a little bit of a revolution. So, Comic Code had kind of just fallen out and by the way i think i'm going to really go up to 2000 today i think that's where i'm ended off so we have the copper age it used to be called the modern age but this time gone copper age in the dark age and so i really just i issue this as 1985 uh, just a good year because it's middle because 1984 and 19 is kind of round when it kind of starts 1984 has sacred wards which is the first big marvel crossover 1985 we get crisis on infinite earth which also goes into 86 which resets the dc universe into one universe instead of that complicated multiverse stuff which of course they brought back the complicated multiverse stuff yeah and 1986, we have The Dark Knight Returns by Frank Miller, which is a really famous Batman comic book, which actually led into the Batman movie being made. And then we also have Watchmen by Alan Moore. And so what Copper Age of comic books is the Dark Age. It's like very dark. You have very dramatic comic books, you have more dull comic books, you also have stuff such as independent comic books rising, such as Image, you have black comic books, black owned comic book companies such as Milestone, and you also have fan base rising, you have comic cons rising, you have market such as comic book collecting, and you also have stuff such as trade paperback, and you also have other media having superheroes. So, there's just a lot in the Bronze Age, but in the Crisis on Infinite Earths, Barry Allen died, so Wally West became the Flash, of course. You also have a new Wonder Woman series in 1985 with George Perez. So, Man, why can't I talk about the Bronze Age? It's just a lot of darkness. <laughs> but, okay, here's one. So in Secret Wars, Peter Parker gets the alien symbiote. And, of course, as you know, 
corrupts him, so he takes it off, and then you get Venom by Todd McFarlane. Remember that name. <laughs> Very important name. And, uh, so of course you have Venom, Christian and Venom, also later in 91, 90, I think 91, you have Carnage. And, you know, Todd McFarlane. Todd McFarlane is this young comic book artist, which makes a name for himself because he doesn't get the exact credit he wants for what he did for Spider-Man. Because Spider-Man issue one, which is not the first, it's just famous comic book, which sold the highest out of all comic books at the time, so it was being like a year or two later with X-Men issue one, not the first one, but just like, you know, uh, which is still the most highest selling American comic book today. So, and that was done by Jim Lee, uh, and Claremont, I believe. So, also, and Jim Lee. So, Tom McFarlane is just fed up with Marvel. And what he does is he gathers a bunch of other comic book creators, and they start their own independent comic book company called Image Comics, which... Also includes Todd McFarlane, Jim Lee, or the controversial Rob Liefeld, which is mostly known for creating Deadpool. So, what is Image Comics? It's just basically an independent comic book company that focuses more on creator rights. But, I'd say their most famous creation is Spawn. Later, it could become stuff like Walking Dead or Invincible, which is kind of lesser known stuff, I mean, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm kidding, you know, Walking Dead at least, but Invincible is the Amazon Prime show, but darn, after 2000, so let's get into this, we also had the rise of black-owned comic book companies, so stuff like Milestone Comic Books, where you get like Icon, R Rocket, Hardware, we also get a character called Static, which eventually gets a cartoon called Static Shop, which becomes kind of famous. Um, you also have rise of characters such as Ghost Rider or Punisher. And also, then this is where I'm going to end it off at. Actually, no, I'm going to say one more thing. The um, cartoons, such as X-Men from 1992 to 97, which I should just recently have a revival series, which came out two days ago. And Spider Man 1994 became a really popular cartoon series. So, yeah. So the Bronze Age comic books was. Bronze Age, Copper Age <laughs> comic books was really successful. Now, comic books were being bought and bought and bought. Um, one really kind of changed was the death of Superman, which was basically just a self comic book because Superman had kind of been dying out. And so, stuff, comic books were just being bought and bought and bought. And, the comic book company, market, not company, crashed. And so everything just died. And so you get Marvel declaring bankruptcy in 1996, which is when they sold a lot of their characters' rights, which we still deal with today with such as Spider-Man. I mean, most of them have gone back to Marvel. The only one that hasn't is Spider-Man. And actually, the Hulk hasn't. Um, yeah. The Hulk is actually the solo movie rights is owned by Universal. So, but, yeah, and, and that's where we're ending up today, so, because i kind of been going on too long, <laughs> so, thank you for listening to the first episode of Comic Cave, I hope your day is going well, and I'll see you next week, where, hmm, what will we talk about, so, yeah. Please check out our YouTube channel. I'll link you into the description of this. This will also be uploaded on to our YouTube channel. So comment there where you want to see next. So yeah. Thanks for listening. Stay heroic. And it's Elsie.